Hey guys, just want to take a minute here at the beginning of this show just to let you know I got an exciting announcement here. Uh, long time coming, but I'm finally putting together a virtual summit. It's the Self Storage Virtual Summit. What is a virtual summit? Basically, it's like a conference, but hey, it's online. So, anyway, I'm going to have a lot more information coming about it. Um, getting all the speakers lined up right now. It, just getting the ball rolling. So, if you want to watch and follow and get updates on how this is all coming together, all the updates on the speaker lineup, it's, it's, it's going to be amazing, okay? <laughs> it's going to be fun. So, go to uh, the self storage summit.com again the self storage summit.com just a quick landing page just put in your email address there opt in and that will just allow me to send you updates as things go along get you again the speaker announcements what's coming up um, as, as things move on and of course ultimately how you can participate and register for it so anyway go to that domain again the self storage summit.com Get signed up and I'll keep you updated. Thanks a lot, guys. In today's episode, I have Jim Mooney Jr. He's the Vice President of Operations for Freedom Self Storage Management. And we talk about rolling out new programs and getting employees to buy in. He's just been around for a long time. Great guy to talk about, has a unique perspective on training. So check it out. So the big question is this How are those in the self storage industry like us going to be successful in today's market? That's the question. And this show will give you the answers. My name is Jim Ross, and welcome to the Self Storage Show. Hi everyone, this is Jim Ross from the Self Storage Show. Today we're going to continue our Storage Spotlight series. I got Jim Mooney Jr. back. How's it going? I'm good, sir. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. It's always nice to have a fellow storage nerd back on here. And <laughs> chat <laughs> exactly so, so last time i talked to you i know you uh changed now you're vice president of operations at freedom storage management right yes correct sweet how's that going going good i've been in about seven months now and uh really uh you know working with the staff i have and and, and changing some philosophies and programs and, and rolling out some new technology for them to help them and one of my favorite words is for the managers to work smarter and not harder so it's really trying to emphasize that and, and utilizing technology that we have that can help benefit them because we all know the best place for a manager is renting units. So we want to free them up to uh, be able to do what we want them to do best, which is rent the unit. So. Well, that's kind of lead perfect segue because that's why I wanted to have you on because it's with, with so many different things coming on and especially you're kind of in, a, in this role now with the managers and you're kind of rolling out new things and, and getting them trained up. There's, there's a lot to it. You know, you just can't just like say, hey, this is what we're doing. Boom. Good luck. No, there's, <laughs> which happens way too often, actually. Uh, unfortunately, but, I see a yes. Yes. But I know you take pride in making sure everyone's on the same page and being implemented correctly. So I wanted to have you kind of talk about that today. So, yeah, get the ball rolling. Basically, you know, when, whenever we roll something out, we're very strategic in our plans and our process. Because um, we're rolling it out, it's going to usually benefit the customer as well. Um, but we have to make sure that the manager understands the program enough that when they need to turn around and explain it to a customer or the benefits for a customer, and I, I can give you a prime example. When we rolled out the Express Collect program, where the texting feature for people to pay their bills, if you just set it up and start texting customers, you know, most people, they don't know the text where it's coming from. They're not going to open it. So we really wanted to get into the program and, and, and utilize and show the benefits of it. So we actually created an email that went out to all of our existing customers saying, hey, we're rolling out a new program. You could be seeing this if you, if you forget to pay your bill on the first. And then, you know, working with the managers and as the texts started going out, we would call the customers and you know, call them fast to the customer. Hey, Jim, calling about your rent. You were doing the first. By the way, we noticed you received a text message from us the other day. Did you get it? And they'll be like, yeah. And then we would go into the program. We know that you can pay your bill right from the smartphone. Just click that link, put your credit card number in and pay your bill. It's really slick and it's really easy and it's convenient. And we all know for the customers, they customers hate the call of shame. They know they're late. They don't want the phone call. They really don't want to talk about it. And so if they, if they can do it with technology without ever calling anybody, 
it's simple. And if they get the text message today and they don't get paid till Friday, they can go back Friday, hit the link and pay the bill. So it's sweet. So by rolling the program out and explaining it to the manager and walking them through it and then showing the manager how we make the collection calls and how we talk about the program to the customer, we now have had a more, uh, our click through rate has gone up for people clicking on the links and our number of payments have gone up dramatically from people who are now looking for it. And if the text doesn't go out in a timely manner, they're saying, hey, I didn't get my text message. So when you couple that with, you know, emailing invoices ahead of time and, and friendly reminder emails and developing that program that encompasses all of it, that helps the manager with the collection call. Because let's face it, how many managers really are born collection people? They're not. Oh, no. But if you can roll out a program to email invoices, email friendly reminders, and make that text message within the first couple of days of being passed through, you've hit most of your customers if you've done a good job collecting email addresses and mobile numbers. And that was a big, big thing for us. But we rolled out things recently, um, you know, follow up, you know, the importance of following up a, a lead from the website or spare foot or one of those things. Again, develop a program and then just, now, like you said, drop it on your desk, say, hey, here it is, good luck. We walk in, we sit down, we go through it. But I, I found the, one of the biggest things for me is getting the managers to buy in and understand why we're doing something. Because sometimes, why is it important for us? So, yep. Yeah. So, I mean, it's interesting. We've done that and we rolled out the recently value pricing on our property uh, where every unit's not worth the same amount. Sure. The Veritech model or ProRise model, whatever. Yep. And getting the managers buy in on ranking the units when we would walk around and rank the unit and see what, you know, which one's worth what. Because when you're in a, a traditional property and you got rows of buildings and well, why is the end unit worth more than the middle one or the small door? And kind of walking through the process and having them understand how it works. That way when a customer comes in, you know, they can, they can go through it. I, I have a, a, a manager, a prime example. When I first got here, this manager was used to giving everybody everything free. You, know, you got a free lock when you rented and we waived late fees and we did all this and everybody had to get a discount coming in the front door. And we sat down and started to look at his numbers and worked with him for the last four or five months and said, Hey Stan, you know, we don't need to be giving everybody a free month. We don't need to be giving people a free lock to get a review. And we started looking at numbers and showing them the effects of one way versus the other way. And they can see that, yes, we're less occupied at that one property right now, but we're making more money because rate increases what are going out and they're being effective. Very text in place, it's being effective. The insurance is in place and being effective. And you and I just talked earlier about the insurance, about, you know, starting at a certain level and working your way backwards if you need to. And sometimes sitting there with the manager and, and sitting at their desk with them, spending a day with them or half a day with them or whatever it is, and taking the lead, and it kind of reminds me of an old, old um, oh God, it's floated around LinkedIn and Facebook all different times. It's an old uh, Egyptian print. The top one is a, a boss with a megaphone, you know, screaming. He's got a whip in his hand. And he's these four or five guys below pulling something along the lines. <laughs> yeah. And then the bottom one is a leader, and you see the same picture, but the guy who was up top earlier is now in the front of the line pulling with everybody else. And that's what I try to be for our, our, our managers. Because let's face it, you and I, we, we all started as site managers. I did 20 some years ago. So I know what it's like to be behind the counter. Yep. And for me, it's fun. When you can go to a store and you can rent a unit and you can help them make collection calls and you, you, you lead by example. And that's something that's been ingrained with me. My father always told me, you know, do your best every day and lead by example. Don't expect somebody to do something that you want to do, want to do yourself. Well, exactly. And, that, and that, like you were saying, that when you're, open the new programs and you have it, you know, manager that's kind of been around for a while and done things another way for so long. And then, yeah, you, you come up with a different philosophy really of <laughs> managing a site and what you want to do and what you want to accomplish. You can't just say, this is the way we're going to do it. Here you go. No, you're, it, there's so much more to it. Like you talked about before of the why <laughs> and like when you talk about collection calls and all that, just an example, like you're not just saying, well, this is how we're going to do it for the collections, text, and I'll call. 
No, you want to say the why because now you're talking about the customer's perspective. You know, you're making things easier on the customer. That's that's the why. Yeah. It's not, not so much as about, you know, collect, 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 but no, what can we do to make things easier for our customer? And you kind of get that in the mindset of the manager of realizing, well, oh, okay, that's the why. We're not just sitting here, you know, trying to get all the money we can, which, yeah, that's part of it. But no, there, there's a whole aspect when it comes to implementing new programs and put, taking new things out. So that's one thing I always talk about is when anything that's new to talk with a manager and you already hit on it is explaining the why, not just the what <laughs> of what yeah. we're doing. I mean, the why, because you got to figure the manager is your tip of the spear. Like I, I've said it for years and I, uh, people have told me before, the manager is the tip of the spear for us. They're the front line. They're the ones interacting all the time. If they don't understand the program and, and they don't understand why it's important, just like, you know, what, and, uh, I had a boss years ago in another industry. And he had a line that I love. He said, people respect what you inspect. And it's true. If you don't have a focal point on something, you know, and it's, it's, I learned when I came in here, it was really interesting because I walked in the front door and I'd been you know, analyzing everything. And I'm like, okay, I got to do this. I got to do this. I'm like, and I thought, no, step back. What's the most important thing to work on first? Get that moving, which is rentals. Work on, you know, making sure we're calling people back or getting them in the front or other things. Then we start on the collection calls. There are still pieces of the pie that I want to bring to the table for our group that I haven't done yet because I don't want it's like you've heard the phrase, you don't want them drinking from a fire hose. <laughs> yep. Yep. Because they're not going to get it all. So we we've pl strategically planned out what we want to roll out. One of the last ones we just rolled out was the mail service, a simple one through Sightlink. So instead of having the manager sitting there stuffing in envelopes and going to the post office and standing in line for certified mail, if we have to send that. Hit a button in sight and get and goes. And again, I, I, same, same process. You have to walk through it. It's funny you just brought that up. I, I literally just had a conversation with an owner last week that I was just doing a consulting call with, you know, not managing, just doing a, a consult call. And I asked, you know, what's what's one of your sticking points? What's something you just hate doing? And that's what they mentioned was the envelope mic. Well, you know, there's a mail house, right? You can just have it sent automatically. And like, what? <laughs> so, it's like, yeah. It's been around a while, so yeah. no, it, well, yeah, exactly. But uh, again, we had to make sure the managers understood that yeah. you know the mail service is time sensitive. So if you wanted to go out today, it has to be through them by eleven o'clock or eleven thirty in the morning Eastern time. Sure. Process right. So you have to readjust your your thinking. So the first thing I've been really working on with the managers when they walk in the front door, that reminder screen in Sightlink needs to be clean, needs to be updated, and needs to be worked first thing. They get those the mandatory thing is done right away and get it out of the way. That way you can, you can keep your day clear. And like yesterday showing, you know, just again, the mail service, we walk through and we explain them about looking for the NCOAs in the mail service. NCOA notice a change of address, which is a fantastic tool. So we, you know, we logged in with the manager, sat down and went through step by step. And then when I got back to my office, I had updated an old uh, cheat sheet I had with screenshots. And send all the stores, okay, guys, this is how you do it. This is what you look for. This is how we do it. And make sure every, and I've, I've tried to do that with a lot of things because you and I both know some people learn a lot differently. We have managers who see something once and pick it up. Then we have other people who have to write everything down. So we want to make sure some are visual, some are hands-on. So we want to make sure that we have the tools that they can refer to to go back onto it. Because the last thing you want, any managers are a prime example. They don't want to come back and say, hey, I forgot. They would rather find it or muddle through, and we're trying to make it so it's easy for them to go back and refresh themselves or, or, or use the tools we have for them to complete the job without having to feel like, oh, I'm stupid, I forgot. Because one of the things I told a manager yesterday, I, and it's funny because I was talking to Doreen about it, the only stupid question you're ever going to have is the one you don't ask. Yeah, true. No, so, and, that, and that comes from having – the culture around, you know, for, for the, what you've built to be open to say questions like that and not feel, yeah. in, I don't want to say inferior, but just feeling like you're, you know, asking a stupid question, you know, you have that kind of culture built in and it's, Hey, that's what we're all here for. <laughs> we're all well, here. That's the one thing I was meeting with the gentleman this morning. And that's the one thing I love about this industry is that there are so many people that we, we share all these with or bounce off of, you know, I mean, 
what we're doing here. <laughs> exactly. I mean, this, I mean, you know, there are, I have a handful of people, I tell you, when I write an article for the, the, any of the magazines or online, there's usually two or three people in the industry that I trust that I will send it to ahead of time to proofread it to see if it makes sense to them. Good. Just yeah. because when I write these things, I want it to be, yes, I'm, I'm flattered that I get to write. I mean, I enjoy it. But I want to make sure that, you know, what I'm saying comes across the right way so people can understand it and use it as a learning tool. I mean, I'm sure you're the same way, Jim. When I'm at a conference and speaking and you can see that light bulb go off, if one person walks away with something good that we talked about, I win. Because we all win. Yep. yep. I mean, that's, 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 that's why I did, you know, kind of started this show, actually. <laughs> You know, if, it, if someone just picks up one little thing, like how we've been talking about for 15 minutes, but someone just gets one little thing out of it. Oh, yeah. You know? it's, it's, it's fantastic. And like I said, leading by example is a huge thing because, again, I know what it's like to be in a manager's shoes. So when a manager says, and think about it, when you and I started in this industry, technology wasn't as prevalent as it is now. We had paper leases. We had a dial-up modem for our credit cards. We were faxing reports to people at the end of the day trying to get things done. Yep. Everything now is so tech. So when they say, you know, on board, you know, there's nothing to do, there's plenty to do. We just need to focus the energy on what they're doing. And the best way is the lead by example. Is the, I can tell you, if I'm walking around a property, I'm the first one to bend down and pick up a piece of trash. Well, because it's, it's, it's a job to do. Yep. So you're leading by example. So, I mean. You take pride in what you do. So, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, that's, that's my philosophy. I really think leading by example is a huge part. Um, you know, but explaining, like you said earlier, explaining why we're doing it. And, and just out of a total uh, little little side tangent, but you hit on something that I'm just curious myself. So I'm sure if I popped in my head, it's popped in other people's head. We talked about, you know, with the with trainings and, and getting things out, people learn different ways. And obviously you have, you know, plenty of different employees and you have plenty of different personalities and learning types and that kind of thing. When you are kind of documenting, you said that you took like a screenshot and that kind of thing. I, I'm just curious myself, like how do you get that out? Do you, do you guys have like a, a central policy procedures thing that you always kind of update or? We have a policy book and a lot of times it's just, we'll email them out and I've, I've had all the managers create a folder on their desktop for cheat sheets. And we're kind of putting them, instead of printing them and having them booked and ripped out or whatever, we're trying to create a, a central spot on the computer that everything goes in a cheat sheet and as, as my wife would say, I'm very meticulous, and that's not the word she usually uses, but I'm going to go with that one today. Um, as far as even organizing, you know, their inboxes and their, and their emails, make sure everything gets put away in a timely manner. You know, a place for everything and everything in its place. I like that policy, though. That way, I know when I go to look for something, I know where it's going to be. So by having that folder on the desktop and, and making sure when I go in to visit, if we talk about something, I'm going to go right to the folder and say, hey, do we have this? And make sure they implement it. See, we need to have you back on. We'll do a part three. We'll do all about organization and implementation, that kind of stuff. So, whatever you need, Jim, I'm here. I appreciate it. Again, thank you. Thank you for doing this. I know a lot of people benefit from this. I had the app on my phone. And I love watching the uh, watching them on my phone too. So, yeah, it, it, it's been fun. It seems like the last couple months we've kind of picked up some momentum, and it's 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 fun. It's just seeing the different people it's been reaching. So I, I appreciate it. Like I said, it's not just me. I want to sit here and be the one talking. Like, so I like to have people like you and people in the industry that have been around for a long time to get your perspective and know what you're, you're going through because I learned the same way. <laughs> I do it kind of selfishly because that's how I learned too. So I'm glad you come on to share your knowledge. I can tell you, I, uh, I just had the privilege of being on a panel in the Texas self Storage Association. Nice. It was funny because it was uh, myself, Alyssa Quill from Storage at SAM, Pennsylvania-based, and it was Guy Middlebrooks from CubeSmart, Pennsylvania based. So we had three Pennsylvania people That's on a cool. panel in Texas. Texas, huh? <laughs> and we're talking about different things. And, and we each one of us kind of, as we're all talking, we're jotting notes down as we go, you know, go through. And Alyssa came up with me later. She goes, I wrote down two things you said I'm going to take back and implement. I said, That's funny because I got two things you told me. But we all learn from each other. Oh. And like, if everybody, all the ships rise up. Right now, it's a good time to be in the business. So, I mean, we can all make some money still. So. No, and that's what I like about it. Hey, we're all we're all open, communicate. We all talk about what's working for us. We learn from each other because, like you just said, we have the next the better site that's being ran as your competition is being ran better. 
than they were before, hey, that's going to implement you as well. So, hey, we're all doing better than we were before as long as we just keep learning and growing. So, hey, I, I, I talked to this morning. He wants to build a, build a new property. And he said, well, I want to keep out with low prices and keep, you know, I said, don't do that. I said, come in with, you know, add or a little bit below street rate and put some good movement specials on it. That way you keep the market full, keep the market rates up. And if when a special goes away, your customers are already at the market rate to try and do rate increases. Yep. And he goes, hmm. That, that'll be part four. We'll talk about grand opening strategies. Dude, come on, we've got focus here. <laughs> All right. Well, let's wrap this one up, though. It was great talking to you again, Jim. I appreciate it. Thanks. Have a great one. All right. See ya. Bye. Thanks for supporting the show. I want to let you know that we've just opened up our brand new free private Facebook group. There I'll be having some extra special content not found anywhere else. If you really want your facility to be a success in today's market, then this is going to be the place for you. You can request to join us at selfstoragecommunity.com or search for Self Storage Domination Community on Facebook.